A few days after we moved into our new house, the doorbell rang loudly. I unlocked the door, and the front doors opened forcefully. If you'd finished your new house, why haven't you invited us over? It was my mother-in-law at the door. Behind her was my husband. Pushing me in surprise aside, my mother-in-law entered the new house without my permission. It's a nice house with a garden, and I'm usually tasteful for you. You are a hopeless housekeeper, but you're useful once in a while. Where's my room? This room looks like it will get a lot of sun. I managed to stifle a laugh at my mother-in-law's cheerful words. What a carefree person she is. We are strangers, you know. There is no room for you. What? How can you say such terrible words to a family member? If you apologize now, I will forgive you. If not, then I will divorce you. My husband yelled at me with his face red, and my mother-in-law grinned at him with a nasty smile. How ridiculous, not knowing that it was a meaningless threat. I sighed, and then confronted them with something. The moment they saw it, my mother-in-law and my husband froze. Oh, you can't be serious. You can't divorce me, I'm already single. My name is Avery. I have been married for five years to Daniel, whom I met when I was a university student. Although, we got together and got married because of his strong proposal. Our married life was a little different from what I expected. Daniel was someone who always put his mother's opinion of hers in everything. Even when it came to making small decisions, he would say, I will ask my mom. Daniel always tried to get his mother's opinion. For example, he would ask for her opinion on everything from where to go on our honeymoon to which tennis to see, even the color of the curtains in the bedroom. He asked his mother about everything and chooses whatever she tells him. I was concerned about this attitude, but I pretended not to notice it. Because, although my marriage with Daniel was not a very satisfying one, it wasn't bad either. He did help me with simple household chores, such as taking out the trash, even though he complained about it. On weekends, we would go out to eat together or go on trips. And on anniversaries and birthdays, we always celebrated and he gave me presents. I think Daniel was a rather good husband as long as I kept my eyes on my mother-in-law. So I didn't point out anything in particular to him, and we stayed married. However, something happened after my father-in-law passed away. Our marriage, which had been going well for some reason, began to go a little awry. Hey Avery, do you have a minute? What's wrong? Daniel came home from work and asked me in the middle of his meal. Can we live with my mother? What? I couldn't believe my ears. What's wrong with you all of a sudden? I don't mean all of a sudden. I have been thinking about it ever since my dad passed away. Mom is alone now, right? I know it's inconvenient for her to be alone, and I'm worried about her. I don't want to live with her. Bella is still well, you know. She can live on her own. And the house is less than a 20 minutes drive from ours. If that's what you're worried about, can I just continue to visit her from time to time? No, you don't know when she is fine. Even if she is fine, you never know what might happen. If mom suddenly collapses, no one will know and it could be too late. If that happens, will Avery be able to take responsibility? The hats. You see, I don't want that to happen to my mother. If you don't want to live with her, I will divorce you. You're going to do that? I'm serious. Okay, let me think about it. After several discussions, we decided to move in with my mother-in-law. Daniel's mother knocks about anything and everything. And Dania always does what she says. Living with her was not going to be good for me. But I was pregnant at the time. 
I thought it would be better for the baby to have a father. So I reluctantly agreed to move in with her. I also thought that moving in with my mother-in-law would not change my relationship with Daniel. I had faith in the time I had spent with Daniel. However, reality was not so sweet. As soon as we moved in together, Bell, my mother-in-law immediately began to tease me. Instead of taking care of me when I was pregnant, she threw all the housework away and spent every day from morning to evening playing with her friends in the neighborhood. When she came back home, she would look for something wrong with my housework. When I'm not in good health, cleaning and cooking become simple things. I tried my best to explain that my mother-in-law must have experienced this before and would understand. This is why young people are no good these days. When I was young, I did my best even when I was sick. What's with all the cleaning? You are leaving water stains all over the place. Even the laundry is not well ironed. You also need to make at least three side dishes for meals. Are you going to start me and my sweet boy? She would rattle on about these things and would not listen to me. All whom there were days when I had to redo household chores, even when I was feeling sick. I could not stand it any longer and complained to Daniel. But he always took my mother-in-law's side. Sure, there are some things mom says that are mean, but it's your fault for not doing your chores properly, isn't it? Don't blame my mom. But there are days when it's really hard to even stand up. It's tough being expected to do everything perfectly on a day like that. But my mom did it when she was younger, when she was pregnant with me. So there is no reason why you can't do it. It's your own fault if you can't. Health varies from person to person. And your mother is out of the house all day and night playing around. This apartment was ours to begin with. And she doesn't even pay any of the bills here. I need you to ask her to help me out with the housework until I feel a little better. You know, you are the one who agreed to move in with my mother. If you have a problem with her, then we can get a divorce. I think he's feeling very secure that I will never divorce him. I also sigh at Daniel's smirk and disgust his smile. He wasn't the kind of person to say this before we moved in together. To be honest, Daniel's attitude combined with my mother-in-law and my health problems had begun to wear me down in my marriage. Then one day, as usual, my mother-in-law went out to play with her friends and I was alone in the empty house doing the chores. I was feeling better than usual, so I did the chore more carefully. And just as I was thinking that today would be perfect, my mother-in-law came home and screamed, Belle, what's wrong? Everything is wrong. My clothes are a mess. What? But I wash them like usual. These are expensive clothes that need to be hand washed. How dare you put them into the washing machine? Look how messed up they are. These were my favorite. What are you going to do about this? But Bill, you didn't tell me anything about this. Huh? You should know without me telling you. My mother-in-law was in an unmanageable state. And at this moment, Dania came home from work. I'm home. What's wrong? Welcome. Danielle. Hey, where you ruined my clothes? They were so expensive. My mother-in-law interrupted me and ran up to Daniel. This is the one that you wear a lot, right? Daniel looks at me as my mother-in-law hands him the cloth. Avery, you can't even do something as simple as doing laundry? Well, your mother didn't tell me anything about it, and I didn't know it had to be hand-washed. It's my fault for not checking, but Bella is also at fault too. It's my fault. I'd be willing to tolerate your attitude. But if you are going to say that's about my mom, I'm divorcing you. I don't want a wife who can't even do housework. Get out of here. Daniel then pulled out a piece of paper from his bag. 
There were the post papers that had Daniel's section filled out. He slammed it down on the dining room table and smiled at me, as if he was amused. You should think about fixing that attitude of yours in the future. Then Daniel takes his mother and tries to leave the house. Hey, where are you going? We're gonna go eat out. I can't let my mom eat that cold, nasty food, and I don't want to eat that either. He sets this and leaves. My mother-in-law pulling behind him, glanced back at me. She had a victorious look on our face. I had been holding back for a long, long time, thinking it was for the sake of my baby. But when I remember my mother-in-law's triumphant look and Daniel making fun of me, I feel uncontrollable anger and sadness. Although, Daniel was a person who always put his mother first. He was never a person who would make fun of me. How could this have happened? I just stared at the divorce papers that were left behind, helpless to do anything about it. At that moment, my smartphone, which I had left in my pocket, pivoted. I checked it and saw that it was my mother calling me. Hi, Avery. How are you doing? Hi, Mom. It's been a while. You haven't been in touch with me lately, and your father and I are worried about you. I'm sorry I've been busy, but I'm well. If that's the case, then all right. I felt a pain in my chest when I heard my mother's cheerful voice, which I hadn't heard in a long time. I found myself with tears spilling from my eyes. Mom? <laughs> Avery, what's wrong? What happened? I heard my mother's confused voice as the tears I couldn't hold back anymore began to flow. I was at my limit. The emotions I had managed to suppress were finally getting unleashed. I told my mother everything that had happened. Once I told her, she got even more upset than me. It's okay if you get a divorce. If you are worried about raising kids, don't worry. Your father and I will support you. We've already raised a child once. And look how well we raised you. Leave it to us. My mother said in a playful manner. I wish she was trying not to make me feel guilty about relying on them. And also, this is very good timing. What? Your father and I are thinking of building a new house. I called today to tell you about it. The unexpected words made it difficult for me to understand what she just said. My mother happily told me the details of the house she was planning to build. They are going to build a two-story property with a garden. Contrary to the bubbly tone of her voice, which sounded like a child talking about dreams for the future, it seems that they were already talking realistically about the land, floor plan, and cost, and all that was left was to sign the contract and start construction. Do you want to live with us, Avery? Hmm? Because if you're getting a divorce, you will need the next house to live in. And there is a lot to worry about before and after the baby is born. It will be easier for us to support you here after the baby is born. My mother's offer felt like it was out of pity. And I felt ashamed to be dependent on my parents at my age. But I was grateful. I was I employed after resigning from my job when I became pregnant and I was not confident that I would be able to find a new place to live right away. Besides, I now have a child in my belly, living alone. I didn't think I would be able to handle the birth of my baby. I gratefully accepted my mother's proposal and decided to move in with her in her new house. However, I couldn't shake the feeling of being sorry, so I decided to put a down payment on the house from the money I had worked and saved it before I got pregnant, so that we could buy it together. Then, for the next few months, I proceeded with the divorce proceedings without Daniel and my mother-in-law finding out. Once I decided to get a divorce, I felt so much relief. I don't care what anyone says, my mother-in-law began to speak to me more harshly and selfishly than ever before. Instead of stopping her, Daniel still took advantage of me and looked down on me. He treats me like a servant. 
It's a little bit of unresolved feelings, and a fiction I had for Daniel disappeared completely in the past few months. While Daniel and my mother-in-law were living together, I stayed at my parents' house, and I prepared to move out of the house. I enjoyed discussing with my parents the new furniture for the new house, and baby items for my newborn child. My mother-in-law wasn't there to laugh at me for having no tasting furniture, or put expensive things in my shopping cart that I didn't need without my permission. I had forgotten for a while how much fun stress-free shopping could be. I was so excited about my new life. When the construction of a new house was finished, and we were finally ready to move in, I filed for divorce at the city office. Daniel had left the divorce papers on the table. The day we had the dispute over my mother-in-law's clothes, I retrieved later after they left and kept it in a safe place. I thought I might be able to use it for something. At first, I thought we would divorce after a proper discussion, since we used to be a reasonably successful couple, even though we are in this situation now. However, I decided to leave without saying anything because of the way my mother-in-law happily and recklessly mistreated me every day, and Dania's attitude of not listening to me, not defending me, and repeating the words divorce to me. A few days before moving out, I filed the divorce papers, which were successfully accepted, and I was now a single, free woman. With a weight off my shoulders, I moved into the new house with my parents, and was enjoying my new life to the fullest. Then, an unexpected visitor came to our doorstep. Hey, Avery, you should have called us over as soon as this was finished. That's right, we're family after all. You are treating us terribly. I don't know where they got the information, but my mother-in-law and Daniel showed up at the new house. I was too surprised to say anything, and they entered the new house without permission. It's a pretty nice house with a garden, which is rare for you. I wonder where my room is. They seem to be injuring themselves. I know you are a useless wife, who can't even do her own housework, but I guess you can be useful once in a while. I managed to stifle a giggle at my mother-in-law's cheerful words. Neither Daniel nor my mother-in-law has any idea that we were already divorced. I'm not your wife anymore. Avery, are you crazy? We're married, so you are my wife, right? I'm single, so I'm a stranger to you. Please leave right now. What are you talking about? I fight for divorce the other day, and it was accepted. So you and I are no longer husband and a wife. I was going to send you a letter soon to let you know, but I didn't expect you to come to our new house. I had not expected him to visit my new house, and I didn't want him to think we were a couple forever. So I had sent him a dated letter stating that we were divorced the day we moved in. If everything had gone according to plan, the letter would have arrived tomorrow. Daniel, not believing a word I was saying, approached me with a laugh. Avery, I don't know what you're upset about, but I apologize. So let's work this out. I can't believe you will lie about getting a divorce. I don't know why you haven't come home lately. But you are angry about something, right? I will apologize, Avery. And we'll make up. Then my mother will forgive you too. I don't care if she forgives me or not. We are already divorced. I showed him the certificate of divorce that had stored in the cabinet. Daniel looked at the certificate carefully. His face gradually turned pale, and his mouth started to flop like a goldfish. When did this happen? I didn't sign divorce papers in the first place. Yes, you did. The day I washed Belle's clothes by mistake. You left the completed divorce papers on the table, didn't you? Those papers are invalid. Well, it might be invalid if it's that one piece. But didn't you tell me every day that you wanted to divorce me? I recorded you and your mother's words every day, and I kept a diary. They told me that the diary can be used as proof. 
I played back the appropriate audio from the voice recorder on my smartphone. There was my mother in Lord's voice saying that my meals were bad and the worst in the world. Danny's voice was recorded. If you serve food like this, I'm divorcing you. Both Daniel and his mother were surprised and remained emotionless. Therefore, since you two are strangers, you must leave right now. I never said you could come in. If you don't leave, I recall the police. The two of them became frightened and rushed out. I watched their backs and locked the door tightly to prevent them from coming back in. Apparently, when Daniel and his mother found out that my parents and I had bought a new house, they had moved out of their house and had also ended the lease of their apartment. After that, they had quite a bit of trouble finding a new home. Daniel and his mother's life together for the first time in a long time was not going so well. Daniel's mother, who had been making me do all the housework, still doesn't seem to want to do it, and Daniel, who is not used to doing it, is doing it all. On top of that, she would say to her relatives and friends that she was moving to a new luxury house and they should all come to visit her. But the truth was she moved into a generic apartment that was neither new nor luxurious, which caused rumors to spread about her being a liar. The stress of the situation has caused her to lash out at Daniel more often. With me gone, she has no one else to bend her stress to but Daniel, and they often get into fights where they yell at each other. As for me, I'm living in the new house with my parents and my healthy baby boy, who was born safe and sound. My parents are fully supporting me, and I plan to go to work when my son is older. I want to create a home where my son can grow up healthy and with a smile on his face. With this goal in mind, I'm living a peaceful and happy life by struggling to raise my someday by day.